you have to consider the caliber caliber of player that you're playing against in this spot because if if either one of these guys has any sort of clue what's going on and like they have a queen they shouldn't really ever be 510 uh, my first time playing 510 uh, and at the time this hand were seven handed at the table which is the eight max because of the uh, COVID stuff okay. um it folds around to the hijack. I'm, at, I'm on the button. Folds around to the hijack who limps. And the cutoff uh, limps behind him. Yeah, there was some limping in this game. It wasn't crazy. But once per orbit, there'd be a limper. Mm -hmm. um, a little more than I'd expected a 510, but, you know. Um, I look down uh, on the button at ace of hearts, deuce of hearts. And I raise to $55. All right. So what's um, your stack size? Because that's going to be important here. I'm at I'm at 1.9k and I'm the effective stack because the main villain who's going to be the cutoff is at uh, 2.2k. So two limps, seven-handed hijack cutoff, and you raise it up with ace two of hearts to 55. That's right. Okay. I mean, this is sort of the worst suited ace, but sure. I mean, two limps, seven. I mean, that, those are kind of weak plays, obviously. So you make it uh, you make it 55. Okay. Yeah, and I guess my thinking was I hadn't been raising very much, and I have this unreasonable philosophy of kind of raising over limpers. Um, so I, that's part of what I was thinking. But I agree, it's not a, it's not an amazing hand. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, if you really want to go old old school to some of the um, really sort of beginning, like some of the guys that I gave lessons to in China that were re they were playing like some of the highest stakes games in the world against Tom Duan and Phil Ivey and they needed a crash course in poker. I mean, that's kind of what I did when I went over there like 20, 20 times between like 2012 and 2016. I kind of gave them this very, very basic thing where I was like, if more than, if there are two or more people that limp, then you're only raising with the hands that you would open from, from the first few positions. If you want to, this is a very basic thing, right? For these people that wanted to be pip I said, if you wanted to play the hand, just over limp. I said, you know, if one person limped, Okay, go ahead and raise from what would you would normally raise from from that position. If two people limp, now only take the hands that you would raise from the first couple of positions. Obviously, that is an extreme simplification. But the more people that limp, I mean, I would still pro I mean, I, I have no problem raising like the button with like seven nine suited or something like that over two limps. I think it starts to get spewy when you have three limps and people are obviously prone to call. So you make it fifty five. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. That's great advice. I think a big part of my thinking was that I was on the button, and I just feel more comfortable there raising. Um, and then the small blind and the big blind raise. Uh, sorry, they uh, they fold. The cutoff calls. Uh, sorry, the hijack calls and the cutoff calls. So they both call. All right, so fold, both fold. Limpers. Right, both call. Okay. All right, so three ways. Yeah, the we three ways. Uh, the pot is one eighty, and we look at a flop of queen of clubs, three of hearts, eight of spades. Queen of clubs, three of hearts, eight of spades. Yeah. Okay. Incredibly dry. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, hijack checks, the cutoff checks, and you know it was at this point. I'll, I'll be honest. I was kind of I was kind of done with the hand as <laughs> that flop happened. It was like, okay, I got nothing going on here. Um, you know, any pair is gonna call me, so I, I'm just I'm just giving up. Um, so I che I check. They both check, and I check behind. Yeah, I mean, I would probably mostly check here. I mean, you have a backdoor heart draw. If the board was a little bit more, di like, queen 3-7, queen 3-6. Queen 3-6 actually gives you some backdoor straightening. You know, queen 3-5, well, well, that's going to be a wheel draw. But um, yeah, the, the queen 3-8 with interior straight draws in there, I, I against some limp callers and stuff like that. It's just really hard for them to all fold just with that the way that that board runs. I mean, unless they've got like pocket fours and pocket fives, right? So I, I can get on board with that. So it gets checked through. Okay. Yeah. And, and that check was probably the best decision I made the whole hand, but we'll see what you think. <laughs> okay. Um, so then we go to the turn and uh, it comes out a four of hearts, which is pretty amazing for me because it gives me both uh, a straight draw. Uh, well, it gives me a straight flush draw. Right, you got um, a straight flush wheel draw. Queen of clubs, three of hearts, eight of spades, four of hearts. You have ace, deuce of hearts, right? Exactly. So yeah. I'm looking for any hard or any five or obviously the five of hearts. Yep. Um, so the hijack, who had, you know, the hijack bet 75 on this card. Um, and the cutoff calls. 
And this was the kind of the first big decision point for me in the hand. The, the, to me, I, I think I kind of got blinded by the fact that uh, I had a straight flush draw. Uh-huh. And, and also by the fact that the cutoff uh, seemed to bet a lot in weird places without very much. So I, I wasn't sure what to think of the, of the, uh, of the cutoff. I'm sorry, the hijack bet 75 and the cutoff called. Yeah. And the hijack was often betting, you know, without very much and betting in weird spots. I just didn't have – I had no reason to think he had anything. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what to put the cutoff on, maybe some pair. Um, and so I thought I would just really push my equity here, and I raised – to, I believe it was three fifty. I mean, I can certainly get on. Um, I can certainly get on board with this. A couple things here, like this is again like a play that I might make in the mid two thousand. Sorry, Bart. Three twenty five. Three twenty five. Three twenty five. In the mid two thousand teens, the commerce five ten. Uh, I can get on board with this for a couple of things. Is that I mean, you might have immediate fold equity now. Like the hijack could have queen. Like you said, the, the hijack. They he definitely doesn't need to have a queen to be betting, and the cutoff doesn't need to have a queen to call. And sometimes you'll find even somebody will just fold out like queen 10 now. The the interesting thing, though, is, is that you have to consider the caliber, caliber of player that you're playing against in this spot. Because if if either one of these guys has any sort of clue what's going on and like they have a queen, they shouldn't really ever be folding. Because what are you representing? Like a slow played set of eights or turn a set of fours? This is where like you can... Some of the biggest hands that you can win in No Limit is like when you raise some of these small pairs in a situation like this, miss the flop, and then you turn a low set because you're rep- yeah. So like if you had 4-4 four, four here, right? Um, because you're representing so thin, you know what I'm saying, that you're going to get called down quite a bit. I mean, it goes 75 call. The pot's like 330, right? 75, call- 75 calls. It's 115 to 180 is 330. So you're risking, well, you said it's 325, but we, we'll just pretend it's 330 just to look at this math, right? Like you're risking a, a basically, a, you know, 100% of the pot. So you're risking 330 to win 330. And um, this is why MDF can't really be simplified on an earlier street. Obviously, if you win 50% of the time, your raises break even a profitable, right? But then because you also have equity here, though, too, it's even better. Um, because you're going to improve to the best hand here maybe 25 30% of the time. So when you couple that in, I, I really don't mind the, the raise. Like I said, I wouldn't necessarily – I would t- wouldn't tend to do this maybe at the higher stakes. I don't know what the caliber of player is um, for these guys, for your opponents. The, the, I, I, this, you know, this is my first time at 510. I've never played these guys before. It had only been a couple hours in at this point. Um, the hijack didn't strike me as amazing. The cutoff knew what he was doing, but um, was a bit tighter from what from a little I'd seen, such that I thought maybe he's more likely to to fold if not on the turn than on the river, just because he seemed to need really good hands to continue playing. I mean, the other thing um, too. The other thing too that some guys in the in the chat are pointing out here too is is that. I, I you know I don't remember exactly what happens. Like say the hijack folds and you know the cutoff calls. The limping in right. itself, you know, usually is going to mean like they're not going to have like ace, queen, king, queen, queen, jack. So, um, you know, it really depends on what the river is here because some guys might hold on. Some guys might not hold on. It really is going to depend on the texture of the river, whether I want to, you know, you know, bet a thousand at the end to try to get a, get a fold off queen, jack, who started the hand with a limp. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. If it's a, So I, I suppose... At, at the point of raising, um, I, I hadn't really clear. I, I thought the hijack didn't have very much, and the cutoff could have anything, any of the pairs, including a queen, and if a queen, not a very good one, was my thinking at the time. Um, so it, it wasn't shocking to me that uh, once I raised to 325, the hijack did fold, but the cutoff called. Um, and at that point, my thinking was he probably has a queen of some kind, but for the reasons that you and the chat are saying, probably not an amazing queen, not, you know, not king queen, maybe not even queen jack, but possibly, I don't know. Right, right. So he, so the cutoff calls, so but, you, yes. you put in 650, 725, so it's like nine, just over 900, right? So the pot, right, is 905 going yeah. into the river. Okay. So queen of clubs, three of hearts, eight of spades, four of hearts. You have ace, two, so hearts. You decide to check it back. 
You turn a straight flush wheel draw, hijack bet 75 cutoff calls. Here raises a 325 hijack folds cutoff calls. And again, this is just like a situation where I don't know if the cutoff is a recreational player, but usually you're just not going to see a level of slow play here. Uh, usually going to have heard something from the cutoff at some point, whether it's raising the hijack lead, three betting your raise. It's, it would just, it's, he looks like he's got a queen X. And then the question is, is that, well, <laughs> you know, is he right, exactly. And that's, and that's another reason that when he just called, I thought he can't have a set here. He can't have a really strong hand. Um, you know, so, which is another reason for what happens next. So, um, he checks and I, well, go, wait a minute. What's and the I river? you know, what's the river? Oh, sorry. The river is a four of clubs. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's a really bad, bad card for you. Uh, again, Terrible. I don't know if the cutoff is a thinking player, but an actual value hand that you could have here credibly would be pocket fours. Like I said, when you get lucky and now you've just cut down by two thirds of those and, uh, you know, if you blast the river and the, it, it, not that I would ever be in this situation really, like if I'm the cutoff, but you know, maybe sometime, like if I was in the blind or something like this, I would just with, if, if I were to, if you were to transport me to this river and said, you had to play this hand this way and I'm the cutoff with like queen 10 suited, I'm never folding here at the end, especially on the rivers of four, because like, what do you have? Like, are you checking back the flop and raising the turn with aces here? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, just, I mean, uh, you're right. It's not that, that was the, that, so I wasn't thinking so much in terms of what his view of what I had was. I was thinking right. more, what does he have? But it's most likely a queen. Can I get him off of a queen, a, a, a queen worse than queen, king, queen, you know? Yeah. And, um, it's, and it's interesting because, you know, you look at this, and obviously, like, your one-pair hands become much more... Your one-pair hands that are ace-queen plus, if they get here like this, are become much easier value bets, right? Whether right. a recreational player looks at it like this, like, I find that guys are sort of more scared when the board isn't paired because they can lose to sort of two-pair. Where here, if the board's paired, they think, oh, well, why would you bet? Maybe, like, I have a four or something like that. I just... Like I said, I don't know the level of competency to this guy. Looking in theory, though, this is a very bad river for you, and I would find it very, very hard to fold. Um, a so I should say that he, he, I, I haven't played with him long enough to know how good he is, but he certainly kind of spoke about himself. I mean, he has, um, he, he, look, he, he's very interested in poker. He was talking about it at the beginning. He had these little chips trying to promote like a Twitch stream. So like he, he definitely wasn't, you know, he definitely gave the impression that he knew what he was doing. Poker was a thing he thought about a lot. Like he is it. He was, he was by no stretch incompetent. That's for sure. And, you know, I think like many of the players at that table, probably better than I was, honestly, like I, I, I viewed everyone at that table as better than me, probably because it's the first time I played a five ten, and I had no way of judging it. So I just safely kind of assumed these guys are better than I am. Um, which well, makes my decision next. That's probably, even worse. Probably that's even, I don't know if that's worse or better for you because usually a guy stepping up isn't going to run a bluff. But I mean, now you're representing like you checked back pocket eights. And if I have a queen and I'm that guy. Anyways, by the way, you have a sliver of showdown value here too. Like for some reason, if this guy had like a combo draw, like five, seven of hearts, five, six. I mean, that's another reason why besides the fact that I still think bluffing here is burning money, you could win some of the time here. It's not like you have nine, 10 of hearts um, where you have very, or right. five, six of hearts where you have very little. I mean, you once in a while you could beat five, six of hearts, five, seven of hearts. You know, I suppose he could have eight X of hearts, but I don't know. I, I would check it back. What ended up happening? So, well, I, I, I you know, it distracted me that I might have a little bit of showdown value, but if I did have showdown, I, I didn't think I did. And if I, oh, I didn't have enough against this guy. And if I did, I would win with any bet anyway. So I decided to just go for it at that point and rep just basically a better queen. Um, um, something that I might have, like, checked back on such a dry flop that might not have needed protection, like ace queen, if I only had to worry about a king or whatever. Um, so, you know, I, I, I mean, it's not great, but... I, I thought he has a weak queen. Let me try to get him off of it. And I bet 650. Let me ask you this um, question. That, well, I, yeah. I mean, I mean, well, 
Six fifty. I thought you were going to say like you bet like twelve hundred or something because I was going. What I was going to ask you, Tom, really, like you know, you got to be honest with yourself. Stepping up in this game, are you going to play Ace Queen this way? Raising the the checking back the flop, raising the turn, and making a big big bet on the river. Now maybe six fifty isn't gigantic, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's not that common of a line that's going to be played for somebody that's necessarily stepping up. I don't think six fifty is going to get through hear all that much i mean once in a while you might get a guy to fold 8x of hearts but so hero bet 650 okay uh so i agree with you um but also they don't know me very well at this point so they have no idea what i will or won't do um so i i wasn't worried about what i would do in reality but i agree i probably wouldn't play ace queen this way okay. um so anyway i bet it <laughs> i bet it and he uh takes a few seconds and jams all in uh, I obviously fold, and he turns over pocket fours. <laughs> he has pocket fours? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, again, that's kind of surprising to me, though, too, that he just sort of slow played and slow played when you raised off on turn. I, this is similar to the first hand. I, I saw some people chatting about this, is what they would do with 3-3 three, three or 4-4 four, four from if they were in the middle there somehow. I actually, if I'm the cutoff there and I played the turn as a call with four four, and then all of a sudden the preflop raiser raises behind me, and I have three fours, the preflop raiser is basically saying, "Hey, like I've got a combo draw or a slow playing queen queen or eight eight, and if he is doing something like once in a while with like aces and he's decent, he's going to value better across. Well, he's going to value better across this river. So I don't really actually mind the way that the cutoff played this and not three betting turn." Um, Mm. but that's an interesting one. Uh, I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. Uh, 